Hi, I'm Dr. Leonard Weirater from Eastern Virginia Medical School's Department of Surgery. I'm here at Old Dominion University with my associate, Dr. Mark Serbo, from the Department of Psychology at Old Dominion University. And we're standing in our cave, which is our electronic simulated virtual operating room. Mark and I are going to walk you through what we do here. Mark, you want to talk a little bit about the cave, what it is, and how it works? Sure. The cave is a virtual immersive environment. It allows us to project a computer game, if you will, onto the walls and allows the user to walk into the environment and perform as, they were, as if they were in a natural environment. What we've created here is a virtual operating room with the scenes and the environment of a genuine operating room and then populated it with virtual characters that represent members of a surgical team. Are you ready to begin sometime today? Uh, yes, doctor. I'm ready to begin. Dr. Serbo, today you will be performing a lab coding on a simulator and will be interacting with virtual agents within the virtual operating room. What you have on the wall and you can see are actual people you would deal with in an operating room. There's an attending surgeon across the table, there's an anesthesia provider at the head, and there's a circulating nurse at the other end. These avatars are people you can interact with as you play the game. Anyone who plays online gaming is very familiar with this kind of environment. We can use it as an instructional tool to teach people any number of things that we want to design because we feel they need to learn how to do them. Now we're going to walk through a situation where an anesthesia-related complication develops interoperatively and see how well he handles it. I'll walk you through the scenario as it starts to unfold. Okay. Knife, please. Begin by placing the remaining tokens. Let's see if you remember step one. I think so, sir. Like sometime today, at this point, the operation is unfolding as one might expect it to. There are no complications. The operation is proceeding per usual. Okay, I have the troll cars in place. Are you happy with your less than satisfactory placement of all trokers? Uh, yes, I am. I think they're okay, doctor. The patient's sats are decreasing to 88%. Are you having trouble? Uh, can I have the scissors, please? Dr. Serba must have out the abdominal pressure. I'm sorry, uh, what is the abdominal pressure? Can I get a pressure reading? Insufflation has decreased to 5 millimeters mercury. The circuit is okay and the oxygen flow is on. I have increased the fraction of inspired oxygen to 100%, but the SATs have remained at 88%. The various participants in the operation are going through their various checklists well, to check their systems to, for integrity. No, but I have an elevated temperature of 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Now additional information well, comes from anesthesia. Hard. Can I continue? Why don't we go ahead and well, continue? Well, you're not much help today. We have to stop the case at this point. Should I get any reversal agents? What happened to Dr. Serbo is that he did not recognize an anesthetic complication called malignant hyperthermia. It's a very rare complication, but has to be recognized fairly quickly. He was given all the information from the participants around the operating table, just failed to recognize it for what it was, and thus he couldn't respond to it appropriately. The only piece of interface in the entire game is a headset and a microphone that we use to communicate to the characters. So when you come into the virtual environment, you perform the procedure as you would in a genuine operating room. There's no computer mouse to touch, there's no keyboard to press, there's no foot pedals. You simply talk to the characters. The characters respond through voice recognition and voice production. This virtual room that you're looking at behind us was filmed in an actual operating room in Norfolk, for Virginia. But with a flick of a switch, we can change venues and make this a combat support hospital anywhere in the world. So what we have now, we have just moved in computer world to a combat support hospital. This is a tent hospital. The background noises are actual combat type noises and you have just changed your venue from a downtown inner city hospital to a combat tent hospital anywhere in the world you might like it to be. At the end of the day, we have an incredibly versatile training tool here that can take fairly straightforward technical skills in a safe environment to very sophisticated 
rapid fire physiologic derangements that need to be responded to and treated. We can give them the full coherent educational experience they need for training in a simulated environment without putting a single patient at risk.